starch factory in Marovitska in southern eastern Madagascar was once a bustling hive of activity. Founded in 1945, one of its main activities was to produce starch from cassava. It created jobs for many people and provided a ready market for surrounding farmers to sell their cassava. However, its activities have greatly decreased. Many people have lost their jobs and cassava production in the area has reduced significantly. Robinson David Alexander Tupku my name is Robinson David Alexander. I am the director of Touching Farm of Marovska. The farm was started in 1945. At that time, there was a lot of cassava around. Processing starch from cassava was its main business. There were other business such as production of trees and fruits such as melons. But now our main business is exploiting the forest because there are many problems with the production of starch. My name is Rakoto Louis Martin. I work as a driver here at a starching farm of Marovista. The production of cassava was high because when I was hired here, there were about 1,500 workers. My number was 1305. There were three caterpillar tractors to work at the field. There were also small tractors and trucks, but now there are only two tractors left. There was a lot of people living here, but now there are only few. We are expecting helping to support the farm to start working again, because it can provide support to many people, to our children. So we are waiting for its renaissance and development. Cassava is a hardy crop that performs relatively well on poor soils, with low rainfall and little inputs such as fertilizer, compared to most crops. It is grown in many parts of the world and is the third largest source of carbohydrate. In many African countries, it is second after maize. The leaves are also edible and are a rich source of protein and vitamins. The stems are used as planting material, so the whole plant is useful. Cassava, in addition to being a reliable source of food for millions of people, is also a source of industrial raw material. Its tuberous roots are rich in starch, which can be extracted for use in the food, textile, paper, cosmetic and pharmaceutical industries. Another useful product from cassava is the High Quality Cassava Flour, or HQCF, which was developed by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, the IITA. The flour can be used as a substitute for wheat in the baking industry and can save African countries millions of dollars by reducing importation of wheat. Therefore, can supporting farmers to process cassava into various quality products, such as the high quality cassava flour, dry cassava chips and cassava starch, among others, reduce poverty and improve the living standards of farming communities living in rural areas? Can it contribute to rural development? These are the questions this project entitled Small Scale Cassava Processing and Vertical Integration of Cassava Subsector in Eastern Southern Africa sought to answer. It was funded by the Common Funds for Commodities, or the CFC, and led by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, the IITA. We started this project uh, in 2003 um, to introduce modern processing methods to smallholder farmers to increase their income. By introducing new methods of processing, we expected that farmers would be able to produce better quality cassava products that would attract better market prices and by so doing increase their income. Processing of cassava is not a new concept for many of the cassava growing communities in Africa. roots have a very short shelf life and start going bad after only three days. Therefore, they cannot be stored for long periods once they're harvested. In addition, some cassava varieties contain cyanide, a poisonous chemical which is eliminated through processing. For most communities, processing entails peeling the cassava roots and spreading them on the ground and rooftops of their huts to dry. They are later pounded into flour. 
Unfortunately, these traditional methods of processing of cassava often lead to low quality value products, mostly for home use. Therefore, phase one of the project started by training farmers and small scale processors on how to process high value marketable products from cassava, such as starch, dried chips, and high quality cassava flour. It was implemented in five countries, Madagascar, Mozambique, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia, in collaboration with national research institutes. Basically, we are trying to establish if farmers are given the skills and technologies, can they be able to earn an income from cassava? So this is actually the, was the main uh, focus of phase one. Before the project actually, uh, people used to process the cassava traditionally. They cultivate the cassava, then they bring it, they peel it. After peeling it, they take it to soak it. Uh, they can soak it for, according to the seasons, you find that uh, they can soak it maybe for three days, then they go and, uh, after fermentation, then they go and take that cassava out and dry it. We're starting from the year 2003. We got this new project of modern processing of cassava by using machines. That is the project we started with. It was funded by CFC through IITA. CFC, ITA. To ensure the processing equipment were easily available to rural processors at affordable prices, the project worked with local fabricators to improve existing cassava processing machines, the chippers, and to develop new types including graters and presses. One such firm was Intermec Engineering Company from Morogoro in Tanzania. Throughout this process, it was interaction between IITA and uh, uh, Intermec that actually led to the generation of new, new machines. In this case, it involved Intermec training other manufacturers in other countries. For example, we conducted training uh, for uh, trainees from Mozambique, uh, from uh, Malawi, Zambia, and later we went to Uganda and trained uh, uh, people from Rwanda and, and Kenya and Uganda itself. We went out and interacted with a lot of, of partners in order to disseminate and get this technology, transfer this technology to the people who would, would actually use it in the, in the field to change their, their lives, to change their incomes and, and uh, turn a, a, a better life for themselves. So, so with, this, with all this, uh, this outreach, how many machines have we actually sold? sold? So we have sold machines in Tanzania and uh, Zambia, Malawi. For cheapers, cheapers, manual cheapers and, uh, and uh, powered cheapers, we are talking about a total of 450 machines. For graters, we are talking about 250 machines out there in the field. For presses, wide range of presses, including the 50 tons, the 50 tons is about 50 units out in the field. For the uh, small ones, the 10 ton and the 20 ton, we are talking about 250 or so machines out in the field. One effective way to push cassava commercialization and processing is to ensure there is a ready market for the products. The project successfully tested the use and profitability of high quality cassava flour in the baking and paper making industries. The biscuit making factories, for example, found the high quality cassava flour improved the texture and the sensory qualities of biscuits. 2005 actually we tested the high quality cassava with the 10% we are putting in the biscuit along with the wheat flour so we entirely we success that one only. So we are taken very good biscuits with the high quality cassava. So that we were demanding, we want regularly supply. But demand is there, but there is no proper supply. Some farmers, they came to me, they want to supply regularly. 
but they can't do that one only then. What is the problem? I don't know that one. Because the supply is not properly. So we are waiting for the supply. So we, we, we connected the farmers with the industry like Make Food International. They could not meet the standards in terms of quality and quantity. Quality, it refers to the national or harmonized East Africa standards for producing high quality cassava flour. And the quantity, we mean in terms of amount and the constant supply to the baked food industry. Baked Food International required about 50 tons of high quality cassava flour per month from 200 metric tons of fresh cassava roots. Meaning, at current production levels, nearly 10,000 resource poor farmers were assured of a market for their fresh roots in a year, translating into more income and better livelihoods. However, though the farmers were linked to the processor, they were unable to supply this volume of flour. Why were the farmers not able to consistently supply the factories with high quality cassava flour? There are many reasons. One of them was the low production of cassava due to the use of low yielding traditional varieties and poor farming practices. There are also two deadly diseases ravaging the crop in Africa. The most important problems facing cassava are the two virus diseases, cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown street disease. Now, these are massively important right across the whole of Africa, um, but particularly in Tanzania too. Um, cassava mosaic disease occurs right across Africa. Um, unfortunately, half of all plants in Africa are affected by this disease, which kind of gives you an idea of the scale of the problem. Cassava brown street disease um, was recognized in Tanzania from about the 1930s, um, but has not really, didn't really do much damage for a long period. But it's really uh, reared its ugly head in recent years as it started spreading in other parts of Africa. For the processors, another major challenge was dependency on sun drying for cassava processing. Therefore, during the rainy season, processing was greatly reduced and the quality of the product poor. This led to phase two of the project to address these bottlenecks identified. It was implemented in three countries, Tanzania, Madagascar and Zambia. Farmers were using the uh, new methods. They were using machines to process. And then we realized that by using machines to process and the farmers were still using some drying, the expected increase in volume of products um, was not achieved significantly. Farmers were not able to process cassava during the rainy season. To increase the volume and quality of flour, phase two introduced mechanical drying of cassava using solar and flash dryers to allow all year production of the flour and a two-step production process that takes place at different levels and with different categories of processors. At the village level, the small-scale processors buy fresh cassava roots from farmers and extract water to form semi-dry grits. The grits are half the weight of fresh cassava and have a longer shelf life. They are therefore easier to transport to the medium and large-scale processors. <laughs> This decision we have taken is good, and we want to continue with it. This processing of cassava into semi-dried cake has lesser challenges. We can process during the rainy and sunny seasons. Before, we always had difficulties during the rain season because we do not have space for drying and no adequate sunshine. Here the grits are dried using the flash or solar dryers. They are milled into high quality cassava flour and packed for selling to end users, including industries. The flash dryer is the machine we are now using to dry our graded cassava. It is giving us very good quality grift for milling into a flour. 
The end user processors were also encouraged to get into contract farming with nearby farmers to ensure they have a constant supply of cassava and at the same time create a stable market for the farmers. We have surrounded farmers that sell cassava to us. Those we have entered into a contract with 280. But our doors are open to all other farmers who want to sell cassava to us. We are ready to buy their cassava. These farmers were further trained on good farming practices and given improved high yielding varieties. This is to increase their yield to ensure they have enough cassava to eat and to sell to the centers. We have been growing cassava for a long time but not earning much from it. After IITA came, we got into contract with this processing center. And we are now growing cassava and selling it into the center and making money. The money we received, we have been using it to take our children to school and to improve our houses and many others. We have also received the training at the processing center. Before, we used to plant our cassava using local methods. But now we have been taught good farming method of growing cassava. The researchers also brought us improved cassava varieties. And now we are looking forward to increase production more and more. In Madagascar, one of the project areas that IITA and its partner, the National Centre for Applied Research on Rural Development, or FOFIFA, set up as a cassava processing centre is Andanaka, that receives cassava from nearby farmers. Yes, it was not later than in 2012 that we received training. So the collaboration with the FIFA and Ade Young was on training, not only technical, but also on entrepreneurship. There were really good results. There was a great increase in the production of cassava. Before that, the production done by the young was low and did not go beyond two tons per hectare. But after the training, I'm not so pretentious, but the production increased and was not less than five tons per hectare actually. We contribute to train them how to use these equipments, which you can see there. We also teach them concerning product development, how to use flow, for example, to make pastry products. I have made donuts for a long time, but I use cassava flour since about a year. I have a lot of customers, they do not notice that there's cassava in a donut, because the taste is the same as it is made of wheat flour. The coming of the fresh dryer has actually improved the quality of the cassava that we provide our colleagues in Osaka. That's one very important uh, uh, benefit that has come. At Fresh Dry, I think employment is created. The project has also introduced the production of high quality cassava flour at the starch factory at Maravitska. This is reviving the factory and will hopefully reduce the destruction of the forest. <laughs> We have been working in collaboration with FIFA to turn cassava into flour here in Maravisca. 
I know that the experience has been successful, so actual it is a reason of continuing the relationship with FOFIFA to see how to collaborate to make the farm of Marovitska beneficial. Interest in large-scale processing of Saab is now growing and attracting large-scale investors. At the moment, this will be the second harvest, and we are using raw cassava to the local, for local consumption. But once I reach 200 acres, then it will be viable to put my own extraction plant, and the ultimate aim is to extract industrial starch from cassava. Another area the project tackled was development of quality standards for the processed cassava products, such as the starch and high-quality cassava flour. In Tanzania, some of the processors received additional training on these standards through a project funded by Associating for Strengthening Research in Eastern Africa, or Azareka. Today's lesson are to increase our knowledge on quality and standard because we are not being able to reach the standard. So that is how we will benefit today. The challenge for commercialization of cassava is to ensure the processed products are of good quality and are regularly supplied in sufficient quantities to the end users. However, they must also be produced competitively so that the farmers and processors make profit at the end of the day. IITA breeders and the national partners therefore continue to support the commercialization efforts by developing cassava varieties for commercial use. They are also continuing to work with the farmers and processors to make the production and processing of cassava more efficient and linking them to markets. I have been working with IITA in breeding of cassava, uh, trying to, to breed, to develop varieties and do participatory selection of cassava varieties that are high yielding, resistant to important diseases such as cassava brown streak disease and cassava mosaic disease. Not only that, we have been working on trying to develop high starch cassava for the industrial use. At the project is near realized there is a real business opportunity. We always expect that with the actual economical context in Madagascar and even in the world, we are sure that in any time user must need this floor, are the biscuit maker or bakers. There is also the state contribution to facilitate the project realization. What we want to see now in the three countries we are implementing the projects, we want to see the policy makers supporting those initiatives uh, like uh, developing policies to see really commercialization of cassava uh, in these three countries. It's been a long walk to change the image of cassava, to change its role, but all the pieces are starting to neatly fall into place. In the next few years, Tanzania, Zambia and Madagascar will have vibrant cassava processing industries transforming the lives of smallholder farmers and processors of the crop and contributing to rural development. <laughs>